Hello champions and welcome back to my playlist of 5090 Cambridge O Levels Biology which we are doing from Hodder's Biology which is the recommended resource for Cambridge O Levels Biology by Cambridge International. Today we are going to start chapter number 2 of the book and the name of the chapter is classification. Obviously classification of living organisms and uh, this blue box tells you that what you did in the previous chapter which was chapter number 1 and what we are going to you know discuss in the upcoming chapter which is the classification of living organisms so in the last chapter you were introduced to the main features of animals and plant cells and the bacterial cells and we also discussed about their differences and their function that how does an animal like animal cell look like how uh, you know the plant cell function what are the differences between animal and plant cells so those videos are available on my channel we also studied examples of range of specialized cells and how they are adapted to carry out their roles you know in our body each and every cell is adapted to perform a specific function so this word of adaptation is very important in biology so for example if I talk about the digestive system this is a beautiful stomach the cells of the stomach they perform specific functions which are important for digestion similarly if I talk about your heart so the cells of your heart they perform different functions which are meant for contraction of the heart so the heart cells will not be able to do digestion and the gastric cells yani stomach cells will not be able to uh, do you know blood pumping so this is what is known as adaptation adaptation basically means that a particular type of cell performs a specific type of function in a specific organ and this is not usually interchangeable so our cells are very much adapted okay so that was the previous chapter now in this chapter you will be shown why is it necessary to classify organism see this is very important to understand the concept of classification classification basically means to identify that what is the you know class of a living organism you know that if I ask you how many types of living organisms we have many of the students will say they are classified either as animals or they are identified as plants or microorganisms so that is the broad classification but we are talking about further details and this is going to be a beautiful beautiful chapter because imagine there are more than 8.7 million species of living organism and we'll uh, discuss this word species in a minute you should be very clear about the meaning of this word species so there are more than 8.7 million that's a huge huge number so it will be very difficult for the scientist and the biologist to identify all those organisms if they there is no classification system so we have to understand that there is a specific system which exists by which we actually name the living organisms in the system of naming the living organism the system of identifying the living organism is known as the classification system okay now um, I mean ask yourself that can you name many of the plants and animals you see around you so for example you get out of your house today in the morning and you see a cat or a dog in the street so let me draw a beautiful cat I know guys my drawing is not uh, super duper uh, sexy but try to see that this is a cat okay I will label it now do you know what a cat is known as biologically do you know the uh, exact biological name of a cat um, if you do that's good but if you don't then imagine somebody will uh, call it um, you know one name and the other person can call it another name uh, say for example I can call it my Janu Billy somebody will call it a pussy cat or somebody will XYZ you know people tend to give certain names to their animals but in biology there has to be a scientific way of naming the living organism so we will know that I mean what a cat is known as what a dog is known as in biology okay so the classification system basically focuses on how the organisms are classified what is the meaning of a species what is a binomial system of naming this is very important guys see for example um, every one of us we have our first names and our surnames right so my name for example is uh, Asif Qureshi right this is my name and if you see the first name in my name would be Asif and the second part this is the surname so my name is uh, you know having two components and this is what is known as a binomial system of classification and many of the names are like this I know some people have like uh, three uh, different words or maybe four different words in a single 
single name so that is not a binomial system that is a, a different system but if you have two components to your name there is a first name and then there is a surname so that's how all the living organisms are biologically named they have biological uh, you know binomial system so for example let me write a name in front of you uh, rana trigrina so i don't know if you have heard this name before or not but rana trigrina is a biological name for frog so you know we have uh, uh, i mean we, we have all seen frogs we have all known frogs but uh, how many of you actually were aware of the fact that frogs are known as rana trigrina so every living organism either it's a plant or an animal or whatever it has a system of naming it has a binomial system of naming and this is what we will learn in this chapter as well the binomial system every single thing i'm telling you whether it's a plant or it's an animal they have a funny biological scientific name i mean you would call potato in routine but potato in biology is uh, solanum tuberosum you will call uh, you know cockroach in rooting to cockroach but in biology the name would be something different and it will be two components the first component and the second component and this is what is known as binomial system and we will talk about this in great detail don't worry about it okay we will also understand a scientific method which is known as dichotomous key by this key you know what is the purpose of a key key is something which solves a problem so for example if i give you a problem that we have this living organism and you have to classify them into one of the groups so by using this scientific method you will classify this uh, living organism into one class or the other and we will discuss how does that work okay we will also talk about the latest advances in biology you know what we can do is we can take the dna of living organism and we can sequence the dna and that's beautiful see all of us we have cells in the body right uh, now by virtue of the fact that we have cells in the body the cells have nucleus inside and inside the nucleus there is dna so we can take the dna out and we can actually read the dna we can read the whole dna dna is nothing but a sequence of certain uh, components you know which we call the uh, you know nitrogenous bases and the purines and we will talk about them when it comes to it don't worry about this at this stage but to make it very simple let me tell you that we can read the dna and the whole life story the code of our life is written in the form of dna so we can read the dna and on the basis of identifying dna we can classify living organisms and you know for those living organisms for which we identify fossils for example you know have you seen the movie jurassic park they identified a mosquito inside the mosquito there was a blood and they identified the dna from the blood and that was the dna of a dinosaur so they came to know that such organisms exist you know just by looking at the dna so studying dna is very very important you can identify even the fossils okay and uh, we will also in this chapter focus on why do closely related organisms have more similar base sequences when we say base sequences is the sequence of the dna obviously um, our dna sequence will be very similar to another human being and as evolution proceeds the preceding organism uh, from which we have actually evolved will have very similar uh, you know base sequence of the dna so that is going to be the focus for the whole chapter it's going to be a very important chapter guys so please pay attention and focus okay now the first thing the first definition that we have to understand is the word species a species is a group of organisms that can reproduce to produce fertile offspring and its species are very similar to each other so for example human being is a species so we are a species right um, similarly there are so let me let me give you an example now um let me draw a monkey for you and i know that's not looking like a very good monkey you know uh, i'm not a good uh, artist therefore my drawings are funny and creepy but try to take concepts i'm telling you i've got three monkeys monkey number 1 monkey number 2 and monkey number 3 so monkey number 1 monkey number 2 and monkey number 3 if i ask you what are these the broad answer would be they are all monkeys right but if i tell you these monkeys are are i mean different from each other this monkey number 1 has different properties than this monkey number 2 and this monkey number 3 is different from monkey number 1 and monkey number 2 so this broad name 
monkey i will call that monkey is probably genus of these animals but each one of them has distinct characteristics each one of them is different from the other so each one of them will be known as a species so now you get an idea they are all monkeys but different species of the monkey similarly if now i just rub them and draw a fish for you for example right so similarly if i draw three fish my fish will definitely be better than the monkey which i drew so fish number one and fish number two the face is there and then we have fish number three right they are all different types of fish that i've drawn since they're all different i would say they are all fish but they are different species of fish so a species is something which has very distinct characteristics and that can multiply to generate offspring okay so that's how you uh, identify what is a species it's a smallest natural group of organism which is capable of reproduction and the second word that we have to understand from the very beginning is the binomial system the binomial system i told you already is a system where you name some organism by giving two different parts to the name the first part is known as genus and the second part is known as a species i gave you some examples for example rana trigrina so rana trigrina is the biological name for frog rana is the first part and this is known as genus and trigrina is the second part and this is the species so because there are two components to the name this is called binomial system okay and this is very important guys you will realize in a minute okay why is it important to give them scientific names okay so there are millions of different organisms living on this earth biologists sort them into meaningful order so that they can be classified there are many possible ways of classification so for example you can say that i can classify all the animals into two groups all the white animals and all the black animals but such system would be confusing or another way would be to uh, you know divide all the animals or living organisms into aquatic or non aquatic which uh, means that those living organisms which are living in water and those which are living uh, outside water but that will be confusing let me let me give you a few examples Uh, you could group all the aquatic organisms all together or white or black all together however this does not work and it is not meaningful why because you know a seaweed seaweed is a type of algae it's kind of a plant creature and then a porpoise porpoise is something it's a fish creature something like dolphin so that is an animal huh? that is dolphin both of them are aquatic but you see both of them are very different from each other so if you divide all aquatic organisms on one side and non aquatic on the other it will still not be dividing them into appropriate groups because they are very different from each other the classification should system should be very beautiful the classification system should sort the living organisms very very nicely okay similarly another example you see this is a magpie that's a bird which is also black and white and that's a zebra which is also black and white but they are very different from each other so you know such classification systems are not good we need a classification system which divides the living organism into uh, discrete properties which which are distinct to that particular species okay so therefore biologists look for a natural system of classification using important features of that organism in some cases it is very easy but in certain cases it is very very difficult for example birds ki if we talk about birds all have wings they have beaks they have feathers there is rarely any doubt about whether it is an animal uh, is a bird or not so you can simply add whatever type of a species of bird we are talking about it looks like a bird it's very very easy but sometimes it's not easy it's difficult to identify the organism but the point i'm trying to make and what you have to understand by reading this book is that we need a specific system of classification we need to understand the binomial system of classification so that we know how to name the living organisms okay now the definition of a species one more time the smallest natural group of organisms Uh, which is capable of reproduction fertile offspring is known as a species okay i gave you enough example three different type of fish three different type of species okay now members of a species also often look very similar to each other i mean these are all fish they look very similar but they have different characteristics so they are different species okay there are some variations there always understand that a species will have variations among themselves and uh, by naming system the binomial nomenclature i mean this is i told you two 
two word or you know a naming system which is comprised of two different parts the first part is known as the genus and the second part is known as the species so closely related species are grouped into a genus and that genus will contain different species so for example there are 45 species of uh, this particular snake 45 species but all of them have a same genera which is known as dendrophilus okay so um, as for example human beings suppose this is me you know standing in there uh, you may call me simply by my name asif but that's not my scientific name that's the name which my parents give to me and i have two parts to my name asif qureshi so this is not uh, genus this is not a species because this is not the biological name my biological name is actually homo sapien so that's that's me homo is my genus and sapien is my species and by the way your biological name is also homo sapien so we are exactly the same because we are the same species okay so understand that the binomial nomenclature system is composed of two different uh, you know uh, parts the first one is known as genus and the second one is known as a species and this is very very important scientific naming system is very very important otherwise i mean some people would call a similar animal something else and somebody else in different part of the world will name that same animal um, in a different manner so for example they have given uh, example of a of a bird which is robin so indian robin for example this is a black bird with some white flesh on the shoulders and it has a specific appearance and this is very different from british robin so there's a colorful bird there okay but uh, if you take their biological name so indian robin for example is copsychus fulicatus and british robin for example is erythicus rubicula if you take these names you definitely know that you are talking about british robin you definitely know you're talking about indian robin but if you simply say robin robin bird you would not know if you're talking about indian robin or uh, a british robin so it is very important to identify exact biological names with a genus genera and species two uh, part two worded naming system so the binomial system of naming species is an internationally agreed system rana trigrina is a frog in india rana trigrina is a frog in pakistan rana trigrina is a frog in usa uk wherever you go because rana trigrina is a biological name which is internationally agreed and it contains two parts rana genus and species the trigrina okay binomial means two names by by word by means simply two by means two nomial name so nomi it's, it's a naming system where you use two words the first word is the genus and the second word is the species i have repeated this so many times because this is important okay and they have given some examples and we will learn so many examples in this chapter the name of the genus is always given in capital letter and the name of the species always starts with a lower case so for example if i have to write my name homo so h will always be capital and sapiens s will always be small similarly rana trigrina r will always be capital and t of the trigrina will always be small ferituma faustuma p will be always capital faustuma the second p will always be small so for genus the first part which is known as the genus or the genera the first letter is always capital and for a species the first letter is always small okay so that's all about this video very very important chapter guys and we will talk and continue the discussion in the upcoming video take care of yourself subscribe the channel and i'll see you in the next video very very soon